Hi, I'm Ben Erno, and today I'm going to show you how to better appreciate the three-dimensionality of the brachial plexus by building your own pipe cleaner model. Before watching this video, you should have a general understanding of what the brachial plexus is and be familiar with using the various anatomical directions. So I've made a brachial plexus model of pipe cleaners that corresponds to a left side of brachial plexus. Moving medially to laterally, you can see that this model contains the cervical roots, trunks of the brachial plexus, divisions of the brachial plexus, the three cords, and finally the five different branches. Now I'm going to show you how to make it. In order to do this, you're going to need five pipe cleaners, preferably of different colors. To start, we're going to take two pipe cleaners, and these are going to represent the C5 and C6 roots. So as you can see, C5 is located superior to C6. C5 and C6 are going to merge to form the superior trunk. The superior trunk then divides anteriorly and posteriorly to form the anterior and posterior divisions of the superior trunk. If we rotate this 90 degrees, we can better appreciate the anterior and posterior relationships. Skipping the middle trunk for a moment, we are going to show that the same thing happens with C8 and T1. Here we can see C8 in white is superior to T1 in blue, and then if we rotate it, we can see an anterior and a posterior division. Here in brown, we have the C7 root, which with no changes whatsoever is going to become the middle trunk, right here. The middle trunk will then divide, as you predict, anteriorly and posteriorly into the anterior and posterior divisions of the middle trunk. Now, moving back to our superior trunk, we are going to see that the posterior division is going to move down and merge with the posterior division of the middle trunk. Then our inferior trunk, the posterior division, is going to meet on and hook up with the posterior divisions of the middle and superior trunk. This forms the posterior cord. All right. Now that we've completed our six divisions, you can see that we're left with three structures which we're going to refer to as cords. First, what we're going to later call the medial cord is just a direct continuation of the anterior division of the inferior cord. Then what we can see here is clearly posterior from the other two cords is going to be aptly named the posterior cord. And as we will show shortly, laterally to the medial cord is the lateral cord, which is formed from the anterior divisions of the superior and middle trunks. Now, we can also see is if we rotate this 90 degrees, we can remember that we have still maintained the same superior inferior relationship within the plexus. <clears throat> Next, we are going to talk about the posterior cord. From the posterior cord, we have two branches that are named for where they're moving to. The axillary branch is going to travel down inferiorly into the axilla, while the radial branch is going to travel uh, under the muscles of the arm to the radius. To examine the lateral and medial cords, we are going to flip the model 180 degrees. Here we have maintained our same superior and inferior relationships. All right, from here, we are going to have the lateral and medial cords are both going to divide and come together leaving you with an arrangement that you will commonly hear described as an M. This M makes up the final three branches. Here in the middle, we have the median branch. Located most superiorly is the musculotaneous branch. And finally, most inferiorly is the ulnar branch. From this diagram, you can see that there are many small branches that come off the plexus in various different places. I encourage you to take your 3D model 
and take little bits of string and tie them around the different locations in the plexus in order to better understand where each little smaller branch is coming off. For example, if I were to make a string with the long thoracic nerve, I would tie the string to here, bring it down, tie it a little bit to C6, tie it a little bit to C7, and let it go down. I think this is a great way for you guys to practice understanding where these little nerves are and where they move.